Hey there. So, how victimhood has kept us safe? And, um, and plain small. <laughs> Which is rather, um, it's up for me right now because I'm in a cafe <laughs> sharing about this. <laughs> and I kind of feel like shrinking or I thought of going out to my car, but I'm all set up here. So, okay, so here's the situation. Why, why we shrunk, why we took on the role of victim to, um, to stay safe in the first place. So it starts with a really long line of trauma. <laughs> um, so generations and generations of trauma. So when you get to your current uh, incarnation and your kid and there are these generations of trauma that your parents are carrying, um, what happens is that um, you, when you're in your full power, in your full spectrum, sparkly fantasticness, <laughs> um, it will provoke others to be in that themselves, <laughs> to be great. And yet that's under layers and layers and layers of trauma. So um, it creates a contrast, basically. And so let's say, okay, you're, you being you, be, you being fantastic, you being great is triggering your parents um, to feel that in themselves and in turn is um, making them really aware of all the things they've been carrying that are not true for them and, and their, their trauma from their past and also from ancestors because <laughs> we just like have been passing it on for a long time. Um, so it creates a contrast. It stirs up their trauma and um, they don't know how to handle it. We have not had a history of knowing how to handle trauma. Um, so what happens in their experience is that it's like you're doing something that's making them feel bad. <laughs> now they already were carrying the bad feelings. Um, they were already carrying that trauma, but they were um, able to numb out to it and not be so aware of it. But then when that contrast comes in of somebody being in their full power, um, they start to feel it. And, and then not knowing how to handle it or what it is, uh, blame it on that person <laughs> who is just shining. Um, and then they take it out on you as a kid, and, you know, and you're powerless. <laughs> you're, I mean, you're not powerless as a kid, but you're, you know, dependent. And um, so you're great. Your parents are traumatized. <laughs> your greatness brings up their greatness, triggers their trauma. They feel their trauma. They blame it on you. They take it out on you, and they traumatize you. <laughs> so um, that's abuse, you know, physical, mental, emotional abuse. And so that's where it comes in to, you know, shrink who we are and to take a victim role um, because we'll match, if we match those people who care for us, who are our caretakers, I should say, um, then we're not going to be stirring up their shit. And, um, and that's how we survive our childhoods. A lot of us, a lot of us have one way or another. And, you know, there's many different ways that that can look. Um, so now, and we hide our gifts. We hide our gifts to be safe, you know, to not be creating that contrast for the people who are carrying trauma and don't know how to deal with it or don't even know what it is and are going to blame it on us when they start to feel their gifts percolate up and start to kick out their trauma. So they think, oh, that's what's making me feel bad. That's not it. <laughs> it's just them starting to release. Um, so then now we're grown-ups and um, we're also in a time on the planet when um, big shifts are going on and we're actually ending these um, 
these patterns of of shrinking, uh, matching, sh you know, playing small, um, not being as great as we are, um, traumatizing ourselves and each other. <laughs> it's ending. We're like a bridge to the future, and um, and so there's a lot of trauma coming up right now because our spirits are just kind of over it. <laughs> you know, like many of us are just like ready to start being who we are. We want to support our children in being who they are. We don't want to be passing on that trauma. And, um, and so, you know, but, but then we come right up against this really, really deep survival pattern of, um, of being a victim. And, it's not um, it, it's not congruent with who we really are. It's not really true. We're not really victims, but it has been a a really effective survival strategy if we had any kind of trauma growing up. Um, and most of us, most of us did, <clears throat> of one kind or another. So um, so I'm doing this video because you know that I just a lot of people are kind of discovering discovering that they have trauma and um and it, and we're coming out about it and we're talking about it and um it can very quickly become um a a story that we're beating the drum of you know because it's like for so long it's been denied and then um and then we start saying, well, this happened to me, that happened to me, I'm this way because of this, um, which is an important part of, um, of moving it is to, uh, well, some, one of my favorite cues in yoga is like, you got to feel it to heal it, <laughs> or you got to recognize it to, to heal it, you got to see it, um, it can help a lot in the process. However, um, sometimes we kind of get stuck on that step and just keep telling the story over and over and over again, and then we're just recreating it. So, um, and re-experiencing our trauma and we're validating it. <laughs> so there's, um, there's, there comes a point, um, and it's, you know, it's up to the individual if it comes sooner or later, but I'm just talking about this because, um, I feel it's time we can start passing this on that we can do it sooner. <laughs> you know, for those of us who have been working with um, trauma for a while now, like we can, we can start to pass on some of what we learned about it and that, um, you know, what you say is powerful. That is manifestation. And, um, hmm. So I guess I'm just calling, you know, it's like, there, I'm calling you, if this resonates with you, to um, to consider some other ways you could look at it. And, and for me, the way um, I've looked at, the way I keep looking at, <laughs> keep discovering, like, the hardest times in my life are that they're gifts. And, um, and also that I don't always need to learn that way anymore. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be so hard. Something beautiful is happening. Um, and, you know, like, that trauma is stored in our bodies. <laughs> you know, we, we, are, we inherited it from our ancestors, and then we got some of it fresh <laughs> in our own childhoods. And, um, and so, you know there are ways to directly address moving it out of your body like um well yoga is one way that i've uh, especially forest yoga is um or, or some kind of yoga practice that is um ad actually addresses trauma forest yoga is what i'm trained in um and, and it's really excellent at that um massage i mean obviously like we know about therapy and sometimes a lot of times I see therapy really making this worse because we just go in there and talk about how bad everything was and we get validation for that and it kind of scratches an itch but it's just like keeping it around um, 
I'm I prefer more quantum versions of support um, like coaching coaching's about what's possible um, what's happening now um, like my coaching practice is about becoming who you are finding your own guidance system <laughs> um, and there, there are lots and lots and lots of healing modalities. You know, there's past life regression and there's plant medicine, you know. There's, there's um, native ceremony. And um, so to, you know, find, find the things to address what's going on in, in your tissues, the issues in your tissues. <laughs> um, cleanses, cleansing your guts. Um, exercise can do it. Um, and then alongside that start trying on some new stories about what's really going on um today i had the opportunity to um talk to somebody who's going through something um that i've been through a number of times that was really really hard for me and um and yeah i feel like it, it it's giving those experiences for me a lot of purpose i've already found peace <laughs> with what happened and my choices but um but to be able to share it with this person who's going through it for the first time and support them in their own awareness of what may really be going on is um is quite a privilege for me so you know whatever Whatever your trauma is, wherever you felt like a victim, um, you know, certainly, you know, I'm not saying, like, it's your fault, <laughs> but not but. And you can also take responsibility for it and tell a more empowering story about whatever happened to you or whatever choices you made and um and then that's how we bridge to the future and a new way of respecting ourselves and respecting other people and lord knows what we're capable of if we actually do that <laughs> beautiful 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 things um and, and so it can be safe to come out and be who we are and not, um, you know, not be triggering other people all the time. <clears throat> um, but in this time, it's still happening. <laughs> I, I heard somebody in the cafe here getting triggered earlier and um, calling somebody a faggot and something about nail polish and... I just, you know, it's like that's somebody who's got who's carrying a lot of trauma <laughs> and is triggered by I'm guessing a man wearing nail polish. <laughs> um and becoming a really scary person and you know seeking to pass that on. Um so yeah, it can be a really vicious cycle, but I am I am convinced that it's ending right now and that's why it's up and that's why we're all starting to tell our stories and it's just, you know, we can go around and around longer if we want, but oh oh here's Oh, here's something. This is what I think is going on. Oh hey Sandy. I'm I'm kind of almost done. Um so you might want to start over. I don't know. I'm, I might be rambling a little bit. It's hard to tell. Um, <clears throat> so what I also see is that, so if we play small to stay safe, because, you know, being fully ourselves can trigger other people's trauma when they start to feel who they are. Um, It's actually not working anymore. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, so it's not working anymore to be, like it's no longer safe to really play the victim and to really play small and not be who we are. Like it used to work better. <laughs> um, 
or maybe it was just we had the illusion that it was working better but it just seems like right now it doesn't work um, so we, we might be like kind of, you know, running to these islands of victimhood and, um, playing smaller than we really are. And then it's like, still don't feel safe. <laughs> so to me, it's like, well, if I don't feel safe being me and I don't feel safe being not me, I'll choose me. <laughs> and... And this, on this side, choosing me is, um, you know, it's like doing my work to clean my body of, of trauma that I'm carrying and, and slay the illusions that, um, that I am safer being somebody else or matching somebody's trauma and victimhood and smallness, you know, just so that they won't feel the contrast of you know, how they're being compared to who they really are. So anyway, that's the download. I vote be you and, um, and go through the fire of, you know, becoming you because it's a fire to not be you anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, um, well, this is probably like a really bad time to do a live video, but um, if you're watching the replay, feel free to um, leave comments and share your stories or your, your insights. Uh, send along some hearts. That's really what it's about is love. Okay. Love you. Bye.